There's no way to prepare mentally for the final moments when you're about to enter a war zone. I know I had my own apprehensions. No matter where you have been or what you've done, you can't always be fully prepared. I looked around and tried to study the men's faces. I thought about what mine probably looked like. Did I look scared? Who knows? I, of course, had my fears, but nothing so powerful as to come to the surface. All the Marines with me had been just waiting, preparing for D-Day. Whatever fate could bring us was unknown, the essence of being a warrior bound for the fight. A mix of anticipation and excitement gripped my gut as we boarded the loud CH-47 Chinooks. Fears of getting maimed or shot were pushed far in the back of my brain, away from my second-by-second -second awareness. My apprehensions faded away as I got off the helicopter and hit the soft dirt of a farmer's field. Awareness of my surroundings flooded my senses. Suddenly we were in the enemy's territory. My eyes and ears were open wide. Every little noise brought thoughts of the enemy drawing near. He was nowhere to be seen, but I knew as I did all the Marines that he was out there somewhere waiting for us to slip up and make a mistake. One, six, uh, do you have a grid for where you're at and uh, what direction the fire is coming from? Some explosions rocked the morning's break and the first bit of contact with the enemy rang out through the distance. First and second platoons would remain in sporadic engagements throughout the long hot day as third platoon and headquarters, reinforced, moved north unimpeded. The canals which run through the farmland of Nawa are extensive and forbade much movement between first and second platoons in the west and ourselves in the east. By nature and as a Marine, I will not tell you a sob story about our hardships or pain.
memories of home are kept in the back of my mind. There is far too much to focus on out here in the now to be somewhere else in my head. Maybe stifling hot and dry. There may be roadside bombs and enemy observing you every second of the day. My water might always be hot, and no matter how much I drink, I'm still thirsty. Yeah, I did actually. It's kind of rare to see that much lighting. Our movements may be long, the flies are impetuous, the air may be always filled with some kind of foul odor. But regardless of all this, I'm glad to be here. I will say that despite all challenges, the Marine Corps is a focused entity and that we will work our hardest to help the Helmandis regain control of their land from their foes. Dawatan Mozan de Afghanistan. From the outside looking in, I see a hard-working people here in Helmand province. More is done with less every day, and wherever you look, there are signs of ingenuity. For me, it's sad to see young children standing ankle-deep in puddles of animal feces and putrid water, but I know well that the facts of existence here are stark in comparison to my life back in the States. Here, on the faces of the people, you can see a strong sense of pride coupled with a desperation for positive change. While the world might think that the Afghan people dig their own graves by allowing violence and insurgency to dwell in their midst, you can't help but notice what sort of fear these people live under. They have said it themselves. We don't know who to trust, whether it's the Taliban, the Americans, or our own army and police. Everyone throughout history has had their way with this ancient crossroads of a country. Now it is up to us to reclaim the last seven or eight years of reduced presence here. Only a steady plan for follow-on operations and reconstruction can help this place flourish. If we leave early or fail to get the job done, Helmand or any other province will fall into the vicious of violence and crime that has racked this area for so long. It's amazing, despite how poor the people are, their hardships and pain, they still have the capacity to show us great hospitality. I look around and I can see many children. Most have bright eyes and smiles. Some are sullen and just stare. There's a small boy pushing a heavy wheelbarrow or leading a herd of cattle or a flock of sheep. These are strong, capable people. They're only locked in the past, both because fundamental change is difficult and that violence has kept them firmly in place as they are. As distrustful and wary as they may be of outsiders, Pashtuns of Nawa and the surrounding areas have shown the Marines that they are not savages unworthy of a helping hand, but are people who with a chance can do great things culturally and economically. If we can get them on their feet just enough, then perhaps the Afghans can stand up totally against the individuals who would rather see women and children and elders die in the midst of war and social chaos than see a peace reign in Afghanistan.
My mission here is not just to do my part to bring stability and legitimacy to these people and their government, but also to take with me the awareness of Afghanistan to Americans at home. My children will grow up knowing the hardships of the Helmandis and all of Afghans alike. It's the strength that these people show in the face of constant adversity, which we Americans can take home and apply in our own lives. If we come and we stay, uh, will our compounds or bases or patrol outposts be attacked and will their families or, or homes be damaged in the process? So there are those two fears and that's, that's very real and it's uh, part of what, uh, this part of our challenge here is part of this operation. Perfect. Uh, can you tell me your full name? Um, Sergeant Bill Kerr, last name spelled Kahir, C-A-H-I-R, from Alexandria, Virginia.